So celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder, meaning a condition in which our body uh, produces antibodies and cells that attack our own organs. Uh, there are many different autoimmune conditions. Uh, one of the most common is type 1 diabetes, uh, in which antibodies uh, and cells actually attack our uh, cells in the pancreas that produce insulin, and this causes the diabetes to, to occur. Uh, this is typically a disease of children. Um, studies have shown since the 80s already that there is a strong association between type 1 diabetes and celiac disease. Uh, in reality, numbers show that uh, in general about 10% of the patients that have diabetes, type 1 diabetes, have also celiac disease or will develop celiac disease at some point in time. On the other hand, vice versa, out of 100 individuals with celiac disease, about 5 of them have type 1 diabetes. So there is a strong association. We don't know yet whether the association is simply due to the fact that they do share some genes. This has been very well clearly demonstrated years ago. There are several genetic components that are the same between type 1 diabetes and celiac disease. So it could be simply an association due to a similar genetic background or whether the one condition kind of leads to another and uh, this has been proposed and there are animal models that actually suggest that this may be the case and the thinking is that uh, if you have undiagnosed celiac disease you do have an autoimmune condition, you do have a predisposition to develop autoantibodies and the presence of gluten continuously fuels this immune reactivity so if you are predisposed then this might lead to full and overt um, type 1 diabetes. A lot of gluten-free foods are made with refined carbohydrates. Refined carbohydrates means that they're broken down into simple sugars or simple glucose units. Um, with that change, the diabetes control frequently changes as well. So meaning that um, if they're under well con good control, then sometimes they have another problem in the future. So um, meeting with a dietitian is really important for me to educate them on whole grains that are gluten-free as well. When you're looking at food products, it's always going to be um, less um, there are less processed ingredients. Usually, more processing usually gives us more refined carbohydrates, as we were talking about. And everyone, not just people with diabetes, should consume that because there's a lot of research that shows that's where the carbohydrates get their bad name from. Because you know all this refined refining that we do breaks things down that um, and causes us a lot of times to overeat. So if we, you know, aren't full on, you know, whole grains, then we end up eating more and then we end up eating more calories and more calories that we don't need causes us to gain weight. A lot of the foods that are gluten-free um, actually are um, made with, there's a a variety of flours that it, they can be made with. Typically what families choose, or especially with kids choose, are things that are made from rice, um, potatoes, cornstarch base, tapioca flour, all of those are simple carbohydrates um, that are broken down and could put diabetes control and are not in good control anymore. Um, there are some options, alternative options that I frequently recommend, such as things with like buckwheat, which actually has nothing to do with wheat. Um, there is some bean flours or nut protein rich flours. Um, quinoa is another one that are good grains that have more fiber and actually some protein content.